Well guys, the day has come. Today is the day I take delivery of my new Benpact RL8500 brake lathe. Cy Freight just called and they said they're right down the street. So let's get this delivery going. All right, it's here. Let's get this thing open. Guess the pallet got beat up pretty good. It slid around a lot. So there we have it, RL8500 by Ranger and the boxes. Got the workbench. All the tooling. All right, let's unbox all this tooling. Came with a little crank knob, a wrench, some spacer, another spacer, the adapter.
another a little spacer bushing the boring bar it even comes with the inserted uh, cutter head uh, chip guard anti-vibration band another anti-vibration band for the drum belt another belt the wrench another uh, adapter spring adapter This looks like the arbor to hold the boring bar. Another adapter. Another adapter. Bigger adapter. Another adapter, cone shaped. Larger one. Another adapter. And looks like the top to the boring bar uh, mount. Nice. So as you can see, this is all the tooling and adapters that came with the lathe. A lot of them are stacked up and stuff. Um, but very, very nice. Big selection of stuff. The boring bar, the boring bar adapter. Boring bar adapter uh, plate. Uh, it's like a lid, or you know, just the clamp. A couple belts, anti vibration straps, wrench. Got it all. So here's everything unboxed we have the brake lathe itself, the chip funnel, and the chip tray slash uh, bucket very nice wow look at that look at that look at that then we have all this beautiful uh, tooling and adapters um and then the workbench so let's uh start building this bad boy oh yeah lastly we can't forget this gorgeous uh cutting head right here very nice uh two of the uh cutters but then it has the carbide inserts that bolt into the cutter, fully adjustable. They slide in and out. And then you can adjust them back here, but look how thick and beefy this is. They're so beefy. And I love how, how you know short these are, so that way you can really um, reduce the chatter and vibration. I mean, they can come out more, you know, but you want, you know, the least amount of, um, of the cutter sticking out because that will induce um, vibration and chatter. So very, very nice, super rigid setup here. All right, let's start building the cabinet. So I'm looking at the illustrated parts breakdown, the IPB, and you can see here, um, there's two side pieces and then a back piece. And these two back pieces are the exact same. They call them tool boards, upper and lower tool boards, but they're the same. But I did notice on the side pieces, um, there are different drilled holes, so um, they're both the same, but I noticed there's two drilled holes, and then the bottom side has uh, four drilled holes. Um, this side here is the exact opposite. It <laughs> doesn't have them, but um, there's four on the bottom and four drilled holes on the bottom. And if I look here, it doesn't really show it, but I'm thinking... There's two here, and then it looks like on this side, there's one, two, three there. So I'm thinking the more holes go on the bottom. We'll see. Okay, a little public service announcement. So for the side pieces, you'll know what's the top and the back because there'll be two uh, holes that go through the back. It's the only place the two holes, and they'll be on both sides. They must be oriented at the top side and the back side. And also, um, there'll be four holes on the side and then two holes at the top. But that's uh, crucial for orientation purposes.
Okay, I've just verified this is in fact the right positioning with the two holes on the top and then the four holes on the bottom because the chip funnel has two holes and four on the top, so it lines up. All right, with those uh, just mocked up like that, I'm gonna go ahead and insert the rest of the bolts. All right, so with those bolts loose, Next thing I'm gonna do is put the bottom shelf in and I'm not gonna tighten up any of the bolts. I'm just gonna loop, keep the them loose. Okay, so now I'm just going to snug the top bolts up and then I'll flip it over and do the bottom bolts. Okay, next thing we're going to do is put the guard in and what we'll do is, um, the orientation is um, as such. So I'm gonna use this at the top and we'll go in from the front. So you'll see it's orientated like that. And then from the inside, it's like that. So now we'll go ahead and put the bolts in and tighten them up. Okay, so the couple of them didn't line up too well, that one and the bottom one. So I'm just uh, using a little drill. And there, there we go. Do the same down here. Now you see we got all the bolts in. Okay, next thing we'll do is on the back side, we'll use these angle brackets. And we'll attach one to that side and one to that side. So these brackets are the same way. They don't really line up with the holes. So you can see either way you, either way you mount it on here. Um, you're probably gonna have to use that uh, waller a bit to open the holes up. Okay, next I got the uprights. There's two holes on each one. We're gonna orient them so the holes, these are gonna slide onto the inside and then they match up with the holes fairly well. All right, so we got those on. A little more uh, fuss, but it's all right. All right, so next, let's go ahead and put this in. Um, this is the orientation. It's gonna go slide down in, and it's gonna bolt on the front side of these rails. Uh, the whole idea of this orientation is so when these uh, pins get put in, um, they're kind of leaned back and up, so it uses like gravity to help hold them in the right place. So.
then I'll take the top, top bolt out and I'll put it in backwards. And not backwards, but normal. And the sign will go um, from the back side. I'll use a level and just get everything set. This side has come up a little bit. Okay, last but not least, chip tray. Two bolts left, and that's where we're going. All right, so I got the chip tray or the chip funnel in. I went ahead and uh, just slid it under the top there. I was going to put it on top and bolt through it, but that's the right way to do it. I'll level. Uh, it's only like an eighth of an inch or so, maybe three sixteenths of thickness on the tin there. So I don't really think it threw it off level that much. But when I um, set the table on the floor or the bench, rather, I'll make sure it's nice and level. Uh, anyway, um, the bench is complete. And it's ready for that guy. All right, you guessed it. I guess the only thing to do next is put that guy on that bench. Let's do it. Just grabbing it around the center line on the spindle. Same on this side. Going up, and we'll jack her up. So this lathe can run on either 110 or 220 volts. So it's imperative before you set it down that you make sure the voltage you're running is uh, set. I'm gonna set mine to 110 volts. So if you come underneath the lathe here, here is the selector switch that you will use to turn to 110 or 220. Okay, and I just want to show you that you can see right there in the mirror that right under the setting here is 220 volts. It's hard to read because it's backwards. So that's in, it's not in that position. Then the center one, center one zero, damn, hard to see. And then it's up in 110 volts. All right, with the correct voltage set, let's lower this down. All right, now that it's on the ground, we wanna go ahead and we'll put the um, rubber uh, washers in that it came with. We'll set it down and then we'll slide the studs through and bolt it down. Um, so what I did uh, is use a little pry bar 
and it slides around easy on the bench, but it is heavy as heck. So once you get it where you want, use a little pry bar, pick it up, slide the little rubber washer in place, and then stick the bolt through and tighten it up. And then uh, your, uh, obviously your lathe will be bolted down. All right, so setting this up, here's the arbor bolt. You gotta put that through the shaft here. Um, then that side is on this end. And then the arbor bolt threads into the arbor. But one thing you gotta make sure of, on the arbor there's a mark. And mine is right there. It says 027, I'm thinking that's 27 thousandths. These are cylindric cylindrically ground um, so that they're in, um, they're, they run true. Here's the mark on the arbor, you can see. It's only one mark. And it says 0.015, I'm thinking that might be 15 thousandths of an inch. So we wanna line that up, so. What we'll do is put this in here all the way, like such, and then take the arbor, and then we'll find the mark, and that's gonna go down the bottom. We'll slide it in, and then we'll just ensure that it lines up, which it's pretty much dead on right there. So I'm just gonna hold that in place and screw that bolt in. Use the handy dandy wrench that it came with and just tighten it up. And it doesn't have to be that tight because it's um, taper and the taper um, tightens on itself. So um, we'll maybe just do it for mom and the kids. There we go. And you can see it's spinning. If I spin this, the, arb or the whole shaft is spinning. So. See. All right, so I just got my lathe positioned in my home garage, and uh, you can see I actually took the back um, uprights and uh, tool board off uh, because it sticks out, and I want to get it as close to the wall as possible. So when I pull a car in, um, you know, it's it, I don't have to worry about um, it sticking out. So it actually um, worked out well uh, this way. And uh, you know what, I'm gonna take a measurement for you guys so you know exactly the footprint this takes up. So the bench is 20 inches in width, but the lathe does stick over the back of it. So from the wall to the front, we're at about, what's that, 24 inches or so. And then the length of the bench, is 34 inches and then with the chip tray it is 48 and a half inches and the bench sticks up 27 inches off the floor and the total width is if I go right from the wall out, I'm sitting at about 31 inches in width from the back of the machine to the front, maybe maybe uh, 32 inches with this handle with the carriage slid all the way back in. So that's your clearance uh, dimensions. Also for positioning, I actually use cinder blocks and um, that way I could get my engine hoist underneath it and lower it straight down Otherwise, uh, the engine hoist would be, or the shop crane would be hitting the front of it. And then I'd have to really push on it to lower it on there. And I didn't want to do that. So um, it's actually pretty nice because it sits up higher. There's no bending over and all. And then you can see I actually took the sign off the upright uh, tool board and just screwed it on there. So I still get the effect of displaying and repping the Ranger brand. All right, guys, I hope this uh, video was helpful. Thank you for watching. And the next video, I'm going to demonstrate on how to use this lathe. But um, that was the unboxing, uh, the building, and the setup of the new uh, Ranger RL8500 combination brake lathe.